Hello, welcome back to the channel, and today we'll be doing our first mock draft. Um, I think I might start bringing back mock draft Monday. I know um, I've done a few of them already this season. They usually do all right on the channel. Um, I want to I want to make sure I'm not doing too many too often because I get pretty saturated pretty quickly. Obviously, we'll increase them as we get closer towards the draft itself. But thought we'd just do a mock draft here since it's been a while. And they've updated some player rankings on PFF. Uh, no trades because I haven't had I haven't done the quick. Uh, log in with the uh, advanced account yet in a while so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably subscribe to that soon but um we'll just start off here most of these picks at the top are pretty self-explanatory right Caleb Williams Drake May easy one two and then, and then once we get to three is when I think we have to actually start thinking about what's happening here right when you look at the the Patriots traditionally you know not a big flashy draft the quarterback type team obviously it hasn't been that way in a while I know they did with Mac Jones but it's a bit different then um you got an option in Jaden Daniels um he's pretty much the consensus I would say at this point for being the third pick off the board but you really got to think about it and it's like I think this would be a good spot for them to trade back in case one of these teams wants him like trade back with the Falcons I think that'd be a pretty good trade um, but again, no trades in this. So we've got to go with a no trade here. I think they do just, I don't even know what, I don't want to say bite the bullet. It sounds like disrespectful to them, but they're going to stick and pick with Jaden Daniels here in this mock draft situation. Up next, the Arizona Cardinals. Now this one, again, seems like a no-brainer. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. will be the pick. It's just kind of a foregone conclusion. Interested to see if he stays unquestioned wide receiver one, um, if Roma Dunze slides up after him. But um Speaking of Roma Dunze, I have him going off the board here at five. Um, I don't really know if tight end is that huge of a need for the Chargers. Um, you know, people would probably say is receiver that big of a need. I think they need another guy in the room. Um, Brock Bowers is that good of a tight end, but he won't be on the board for long. Um, but I think Roma Dunze is the guy that goes here. Um, him or Malik Neighbors, it's kind of a who do you want type deal. And I think that uh, Brock Bowers goes a pick later to the New York Giants. Um, again, Dable makes a lot of sense with him here. Uh, Brock Bowers, right? He's a, a generational type tight end. I know that word is thrown around too much nowadays, but it is with him. Um, we've, we've seen a lot of tight ends going in the, in the first round or two and years past. And this year will be no different. Um, when you actually look at a lot of the things that happen, let me just make this camera a bit bigger. There you go. When you look at some things that happen with uh, Dable, right? He loves his tight ends uh, in Buffalo. Dawson Knox, he used a ton, um, but he's also was the position coach with Aaron Hernandez uh, and Gronk and all those guys. So he, he, he knows what he's doing. He loves his tight ends. Um, so Brock Bowers would give him that weapon. He would give a good check down option to, uh, pair with Darren Waller, I think, cause you know, you can use more than one tight end and Waller is, you know, tends to be banged up a bit more. And I don't even know if, you know, there's no problem using two tight ends in today's league. And I think that you can, you know, get just multiple weapons on the floor or on the iron, gridiron. There you go. Uh, another quick, easy pick here for Tennessee. Uh, it's, it's which tackle do you want? I think they go with Joe Alt. Um, Olu Fashanu is again, obviously close to him, but we're going to see right now. I think it's Joe Alt. Um, we'll, we'll see how they all test out for sure. Uh, Atlanta. Now, I have a video coming out soon, I think probably tomorrow, and Tuesday, uh, with J.J. McCarthy uh, being the first guy we're going to talk about in draft. I think this is the highest he would go. Do I think he goes here? No. They probably opt for defense, but again, there's so many things on the board here. I think Dallas Turner is kind of the, the guy to go for here. I know Malik Neighbors is slotting a lot more than people think. Uh, PFF's not high on, on Dallas Turner, as a lot of people are, um, but you got to give a good option for um, a defensive coach. I think it'd be good there. They've gone offense like three or four rounds in a row or years in a row in the first round, you know, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, B. John Robinson. Uh, I don't know if they'd really stick and pick again with Malik neighbors type guy, but he goes quickly after to the um, bears. The next pick is uh, Malik neighbors receiver out of LSU. Um, the third of the top three really good receivers in this class. And this is another sneaky spot. I could see JJ coming off the board quick, but we're going to stick and pick with Ole Fushano here. The opposite of Joe Alt is going to be who the, uh, the the Jets will take as they need that there. Um, Vikings. I, I This is the place where I really want to pull the trigger on JJ. I think this will end up being one of the top spots. He does get mocked, but I'll stop bringing him up every, every time because I have a video again coming out tomorrow where I'll talk more about this. Um, but I think that they go 
um, with a physical corner here. Um, Kool-Aid really, really, really is a guy I think they should go for here, and I have them picking him. Uh, I would not be surprised if it's Jared Verse, Latu Latu type guy on one of the edges, but um, we're going to go with the corner there. And then we stick with another corner. There'd be a quick run on these corners because there's really good class in them. But Nate Wiggins goes to pair opposite side of uh, Pat Sertan um, and helps shore up that defense. Again, when you've now got a uh, Jim Harbaugh led Chargers offense to Justin Herbert, you know, you even look here, right? They're bringing in Roma Dunze as well. You need another guy to start counteracting these corners. Uh, and, you know, you got Pat Mahomes as well. You need to, you know, everything you can to stop these guys. Um, same kind of really goes for the car, uh, the Cardinals, the Raiders. Uh, the run continues, and we take Terry and Arnold here from Alabama at 13, another corner. Same exact thing as the Broncos, right? Same division, back to back picks. You need guys that shuts down these elite two passing attacks in your division because you need you need to stop. Even the uh, what's it called? Even each team has a good weapon. You got Devontae Adams and you got Sutton and Judy and those guys. Like both teams got some pretty good offensive options. So, you know, the whole conference is or covers the whole division is pretty good. So you got to sure up those defenses. Uh, Saints, another sneaky spot for JJ. I'll stop saying it, I promise. Um, but uh, Edge here, I think they go Jared Verse. Um, played in their building. Um, beginning of the season two years ago um it really kind of came onto the scene with that game i know out of albany uh well was in albany at one point now he's out of florida state um was going to go probably around this range last year and then decides to go back to college for a season it didn't work entirely as well as he would like i mean i think he wanted to be like a top five pick but um i don't think anyone is going to complain going top 15 in the draft um speaking of 15 we have the colts here they need some defensive help as well. Uh, I wouldn't hate to see them get a receiver as well, but um, we're going to stick and pick here. We're going to give them like to Latu um, out of UCLA, another freak edge to get him on there, help pair him with Quiddy Pay, our ex Michigan guy here, and uh, sure up that team, no problem. I will finally stop talking about him because he goes here. JJ McCarthy to the Seahawks. Um, this is a good pick for them. I believe, um, it, it fits a need eventually, uh, not right now, super need, but down the line, um, they need a quarterback after Gino and probably not renewing drew lock to an extension. Now we had the awesome game against the Philly, uh, Phillies against the Eagles, but do you really think a long term you're going to stick with him? Probably not. So we move on from him there again with Mike McDonald on defense. Um, I think that he's going to have, you know, obviously a pretty good insight on JJ. So I think that's a good spot there. And now we need to start getting some of these tackles off the board. Um, there's a lot of them, and they're going to come quickly. But right now, Cooper DeGene goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They need, again, some help with the defense. Easy fit there. DeGene also can return some kicks. And they have Jamal Agnew, but he got banged up a few times. But um, Cooper DeGene, good punt returner as well. Rams. Um, they probably could go – oh, not Rams. Sorry, Bengals. We skipped ahead of spot. Um, this is where the tackles start running off. Uh, we take Talese Fayuga out of Oregon State. Um, bunch of good tackles in this class. I know we've already taken two. Third one goes off the board here. Probably going to have five or six go here. Um, now you look at the Rams. They could be another team that takes a, a, a guy off the board. Um, maybe a corner. Uh, the kid from Toledo, Quentin Mitchell, has really been sliding up boards. I don't think he's going to slide up this high. I'm not as super sold him as other teams are, but I think he might go the next pick if I'm leaking picks here. But... Uh, I think they go offensive tackle. J.C. Latham help sure up that O line um, because Lord knows you need it in that division with the with some of the good edge rushers and and how good D coordinators you got. You got uh, not Shane Steichen, the other guy, um, like Jonathan Gannon, D coordinator from the Eagles. You've got Mike McDonald, D coordinator from the Seahawks, and then you've obviously got the Niners' crazy front in your division. Let's make sure you protect the quarterback. Um, the last year or two we have of Matthew Stafford. Um, Steelers. Uh, they also need a corner, so they do end up taking Quentin Mitchell here. It's a bit of a reach, according to these guys on PFF, but he lit up the senior bowl drills. Um, he's going to be one of those guys that's going to start sliding up the boards, and I think it's cool to see a Maction guy go in the first round because we respect Maction around here. Um, instant pick here, Amarius Mims, tackle, Georgia, protect Tua. Very simple. Uh, you, if Brock Powers is somehow still here, you take him, but that's the only guy I would say that they would add over a – Quarterback would be a big bruising tight end, which I think they really do need. Um, Eagles, quite a few needs. Um, they need a corner as well, but really scratching the bottom here at the barrel. I don't know if Ennis Rickestraw is a guy that you think could go this late. Um, they're probably going to need some offensive line help as well. And for that reason, we go with 
uh, Jordan Morgan out of Arizona. Um, another guy that could go first round. They got Tyler Guyton and um, the other guy, uh, the tackle, Troy Fatanu. Um, some other guys that are, you know, pretty close to first round grades. But, you know, with Lane Johnson getting old and the interior line getting old, I would not be surprised to see the Eagles go heavy O line um, to try to regain the form they had last time. Um, now we're looking for a good. Um, receiver to pair with Nico Collins in Houston. That's the pick we're going to go here. Brian Thomas is a good option, but I think, you know, Keon Coleman could be in play here as well. Um, but I'm going to go with Brian Thomas Jr. This will be the guy that you'll see when you're watching Jaden Daniels tape or Malik Neighbors, the other guy out there, mostly Jaden Daniels tape. The other guy that's not Malik Neighbors he throws the ball to is Brian Thomas, big physical receiver, um, bit of a Nico Collins type build. Um, I think Keon Coleman could be a sneaky fit there because it's more of a jump ball type threat down the field, but um, that is something that they will go for looking forward. Um, Eagle uh, Cowboys here need some O-line help. Troy Fatanu from Washington will be the next guy off the board here. Um, bit deeper on PFF. They like getting a bit more, but I think Fatanu is a bit better. Obviously, we saw what he did. Um, shoring up himself pretty well against Texas and um, Michigan in the college football playoff. Uh, Packers here. They also need a corner. I think this is where Ennis Ricostraw Jr. comes off the board out of Mizzou. Um, so they take him there. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think this is where you could potentially see a quarterback come off the board in Bo Nix. Um, it's so weird to talk about Bo Nix because he's a bit older, super statistical guy. Um, you know, you back him up with, um, you know, you back him up with uh, Baker Mayfield. It could be a good pairing there. I'm really torn on him, but I think Braylon Trice is a guy you take here. Um, you know, help that defensive front out. Um, you know, you, you've got a defensive head coach. It makes sense with Todd Bowles. So you continue moving that forward there. Cardinals. So we already went uh, Marvin Harrison early on. You got to get some defensive help here. And I think this is where Jazarian Newton comes off the board. From Illinois, I'm a bit lower on him than PFF, but um, a good guy to help shore up the defensive front um, in a crazy division where everyone likes to run the ball. Um, Bills, receiver. Now, um, I think that they should go A.D. Mitchell. Um, he's a ability to a bit of a reach here on this board. His ability to get vertical and be a jump ball threat at the same time is something that you really need with Josh Allen because he can throw a deep ball or he can jump ball threat and score from you. Um, he's a big clutch player, uh, makes big plays in all the games he's in. Again, he was in like three or four college football playoff games. I believe he scored in all of them, had the winning touchdown in a few of them. Um, very important player, and I think this is an instant, instant pick for them. Now we have my Detroit Lions, and um, while I would not mind them going Troy Franklin or Keon Coleman, I think if Chop Robinson is still here, you take him. Um, they're super low on him on PFF, but uh, thankfully I'm not PFF. So we're taking him there. Keon Coleman comes off the board here for the Ravens. Uh, they need more pass catching guys. Um, a jump ball threat in the end zone, great spot here. Um, you know, also a good, you know, culture fit, a tough, rumbled guy. Um, I think he fits in like with the Ravens thing. He's gonna look good in purple. Um, you know, a, a bigger body can you know, possession receiver, I think, is kind of what you need with Lamar sometimes to throw the ball up there. And um, he's not afraid to run block if needed. Um, I think he's a a really boomer bust type pick. And when you're a team like the Ravens, you're that close, I think he kind of swing for the fences here. Um, he's gonna be another interesting guy. He could go like top 15 if a team loves him. Or I could see him fall the first round. It really depends on how his comp button goes. But right now, that's where we're at. Now, Chiefs do need some offensive line help. But I think more importantly, they need a receiver bad. I went Troy Franklin earlier. I think I'm going to go Xavier Leggett here. Um, he had a hell of a season for South Carolina, uh, especially early on. Uh, might be a bit of a reach, people think. But I'm going to take him here. I, I, I really think Troy Franklin can go there. But I'm going to take him instead. Um, we're going to take uh, Mr. Leggett. Now we're looking at the San Francisco 49ers. What does a championship team like them need? Um, you know, they, they I think they might need a safety. I know that one of their safeties got injured. Uh, it's really the rich get richer type deal here. Uh, interior line also would help. I don't even know. Like, it's just they, they're such a good team. They really don't have many things that they need. Um, 
Jackson Powers Johnson to be a good one here. I know I'm kind of fading these Oregon guys. Um, I, I, this is, I think, a, a, realistically, this would be a good spot for them to trade out. Um, you know, maybe to like a team that did not end up taking like, you know, a team um, like the the Vikings taking a bonix late here. I think that'd be a good spot for him. But since we're not trading and sticking and picking, we're going to have him go with Jackson Powers Johnson. Center guard can really kind of play both. I think it'd be a good spot for them there. Um, really a, a wrecker. Dude was having a great job doing his thing uh, at the Senior Bowl as well. Had some good highlights. Um, and there is the full results. Um, I'll quickly scroll through it there. Um, and yeah, let me know down below what you think. If you agree with some of these picks here, um, I know we're pretty far out, so I'm sure this could all change like crazy. Like I know, um, uh, I was early on Anthony Richardson doing his thing, sliding up boards. I think JJ will slide up boards more. He's probably the guy that's going to slide up him and Quentin Mitchell look like the early favorites to slide up boards. Um, and I think one of the bigger wild cards is Brock Bowers. You know, he's a tight end, you know, the whole, you know, the, 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 the favorite words of the nerds positional value could be end up screwing him potentially out of a super good draft pick, but uh, that's all we have for now. So uh, thank you again for watching. Please like, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Peace.